I read that, that, that you started songwriting, I started an interest in, in music as a young child because of an accident. What happened was I was about uh, eight years old and I was running for lunch with about a thousand other children, all running as you do for lunch, and tripped to the top of the stairs and hit the bottom of the stairs, slid along this floor, and I don't know if you remember from old school days, but there were those huge radiators yeah. that stuck out Some like corrugated that. corrugated ones. Yeah, right? and they had like a point yeah. all the way across. Yeah. Yeah. And I slid along the floor and, and hit this radiator and cracked my um, head open. And there are two things I remember about waking up. Um, one was that uh, all the kids are gone. You know, I'm laying there in a pool of blood and everyone's gone off to lunch. Uh, apart from this one girl who... I had these two girls that fought over me at seven. <laughs> and uh, I swear to God, I remember their names. Well, actually, I'm not going to name the... Um, I'm not going to name the plainer of the two girls. But there was one relatively... She wasn't plain, but there was one real corker. And, uh, and they used to fight over me. And the, one, and the one that was, let's say, a more homely type of girl was there when I woke up and uh, I had, you know, I was bleeding really badly and this girl was crying next to me. Um, but the strange thing was about two weeks later, uh, I turned up at home with a violin. <laughs> now, I mean, I really wish to God I'd picked a different instrument, but that was the first <laughs> one that they passed around. Uh, so I spent seven years, I decided after two weeks that this was not the instrument for me and my parents decided you started so you'll finish <laughs> and uh and so i played it for seven years very badly i would imagine but before that been no interest there'd in been music. no interest in music yeah. I'd, I'd been obsessed with uh bugs and insects and uh and also i was i was ahead of average at both english and maths and um what happened was within six months i had no interest in the whole nature thing um, I was obsessed with music, um, and I couldn't do maths. <laughs> Amazing. Indeed. I couldn't do maths, and uh, <laughs> and I've never actually regained my uh, my grip on maths. I've never told my accountants that. Actually. <laughs> Speaking of your accountants, uh, what's this that I hear that you're you're actually not going to uh, uh, sell any more records? That you're going to let let people uh, on the internet free download? Yeah. Because you say you don't need the money. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the honest truth is... How much money uh, do, you, do you have to have before you don't need any, George? <laughs> is <it relevant? laughs> Well, my real point is actually... My real po point is um, that, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a socialist by any means. Do you know what I mean? I don't believe in the ultimate um, goals of socialism. Um, but at the end of the day, I do... I mean, I kind of, I approve of capitalism, but if you were going to, if you were going to provide it as a, uh, a model that you were trying to sell to a generation of people, right, it would have a ceiling on it, wouldn't it? It would have a ceiling somewhere so that the money didn't just shoot from the bottom of society straight up to the top the way it does now. And now I think it's getting out of control and the whole of life is, is uh, out of balance because of it. So you put a salary feel, cap on yourself. I feel like I, I do feel like <laughs> I, I feel like I've always been paid too much money. That's the truth. I've I, always, I, think, I think pop stars, film stars. Footballers. Footballers now joined the list yeah. yeah actually football has been way ahead of us guys for a long time yeah, yeah. but um, that's interesting so you put a, your voluntary salary yeah i just on. think i mean i truly believe in higher taxation yeah. for the rich and uh Do. i've always i've always believed that yeah. and my way of i suppose so you wouldn't scram if they put so sort of like said you'll pay now 60p in the pound tax you would still live here would you? i'd still live here would you I'd still live here if you're getting if the down the rush of people going over you to go leave the country. I think. I know. <laughs> I know. I understand that, and I yeah. understand that my t politics um, is not something that necessarily goes with having the kind of money I have. I just think that you know my way of trying to say thank you to people um, for the positive. I mean, I've had 22 years of positive feedback from the public. I mean, I love my country, um, and I love my audience, and I really respect my audience. I, the trouble is, I don't feel like I can feel my audience through the media that we now have. And I feel like... So um, that's where I contact them directly. Though. Yeah, I can the contact them directly. I can oh. say, look, you know what, you've, you've, you've made me a rich man. You can stop paying for my money. I would like to have a site that 
people, instead of paying me, they actually Make donate some money. That's a nice idea. Um, mm. It would be really nice. It keeps the whole thing very positive, and it's some kind of antidote to... As someone who thinks that what they do is a positive thing, it's a kind of antidote to all this negativity that just kind of is just flying at you as a, as a, as a famous but, wealthy person. I but you say, you say you're not a socialist, but of course it's well documented that you've, you've met Mr. Blair, you've, indeed you had dinner with Mr. Blair. But what's that got to do with socialism? <laughs> <laughs> But, but of course, you walked into that one. I, well, I, I, but he, of course, I mean, would, uh, would claim that the, the mutual attraction there, of course, is one rock and roller to another. Well, basically, I had, um, I had before, the, before the first election, um, you know, I was invited to the big party with the blokes from Oasis and all that stuff, and I thought, no way I'm doing that. Um, you know, rule Britannia, call Britannia and all that bollocks. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I wasn't prepared to do that. If he was going to, if I was going to be uh, one of his supporters, it had to be a private thing anyway. So, so I, I, I met up with him. Um, at the end of the uh, evening, um, as I was about to leave, Cherie said to Tony, uh, and I have to say, I really enjoyed the evening. Charming family, yeah, nice charming time, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't laugh, it's true. <laughs> and Cherie said to, uh, said to me, um, oh, you've got to have Tony show you your, his guitar. <laughs> I said, oh, please don't show me your guitar, I was just about to vote for you. <laughs> and uh, you're throwing away a vote. And, um, and so, sure enough, they opened the little downstairs toilet and uh, there was a little guitar. Like one of the ones you buy a 14-year-old, really. <laughs> and a little amplifier. I don't know if he plays it on the bog. <laughs> I've no idea. But the, but the fact is, he um... showed me this little guitar. And my immediate thought, as someone who's always wanted to be, you know, in pop music, was that, that means there's some little part of you that wanted to be up there doing what I'm doing. And that means that there's something, in, you know, something similar about our egos. And, uh, you know, my ego is pretty out of control, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. 